Welcome to Heartfelt Awakening Radio. I am your host, Denny Van, and today we're going to be talking with Tammy Kittle and her story with her children, one who suffers from celiac disease and the other with autism. Hey, Tammy, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Absolutely. So you're a business owner. I'd love to talk to you about your business and what brought you here. Uh, my husband and I own a small business in town here where we're a, a small repair and restoration company. So he does um, he, he does a lot of uh, repairs and renovations and emergencies and that sort of thing. And uh, I do a lot of his uh, phone calls and running around and bills and invoices and that sort of thing so when you own your own business you're kind of a jack of all trades so <laughs> and it's only uh, the two of us and a few employees so yeah so you end up doing uh, wearing a lot of different hats that's for sure so absolutely and so heartfelt awakening radio is all about transformational journeys to spirit and you shared a little bit about your story with your children and you wanted to talk about that today so i would like to just open it up to go ahead and share your story oh okay uh like my son my first son was born uh he's uh, 14 now but uh he was born having seizures and at one day old, he was taken, um, flown to uh, uh, Seattle actually from here into the States for emergency medical care. And at the time they didn't take me with them. Um, they just took, took him. And so I had to uh, fly down myself with my family um, on regular commercial airline to get to my to, to the hospital with him. And uh uh, it's a little difficult to to do, and it's a little difficult to relive that uh, having to give up your baby at one day old and have him taken for uh, medical care. And uh, then I had to walk Vancouver and uh, Seattle International Airports just 48 hours after giving birth. So <laughs> they don't cover that in the birthing manual. So so it was uh, quite a quite a traumatic uh, experience, and uh, just uh, really set our or uh, start to parenthood, not exactly how you would uh, how you would ever imagine it. So, uh, so yeah. So we were thrown, and luckily he is a you know happy, healthy, a fourteen year old. But his journey with seizures went on for a few years until he was diagnosed with celiac disease. And um, at the time, uh, this is ten years ago now. They're saying that celiac disease and uh, seizures weren't connected, but now they're saying that uh, studies have shown that they are. So. Um, people out there that are struggling, you know, with seizures, maybe um, getting tested for celiac disease might uh, might might solve some of some of your pro problem because that was uh, something that happened with him at a young age, and then when he he switched to a strict gluten free diet, he hasn't had a seizure in years now. So that's where we're at with that right now. I can only imagine. I I'm a mom of two boys. They're much older now, but okay. So you just give birth. <laughs> And a day later, you're traipsing through the airport to go to some hospital where your son was taken. Yes. What's going on inside? <laughs> I mean, from a spiritual standpoint, and, and, you know, and maybe I can only imagine being a mom and a new mom. I mean, I had a similar experience, but nothing. Um, I got sick and I was separated from my son at five days old. So... And yet you have to fly, go through the airport. Yeah, I can only imagine walking through the airport the day I, I think giving every, birth. I mean, what's going through your mind? I, I think everybody just has a survival mode that you just get into. Like there's really no, nothing else you can do at that point in time. You know, you have to do, you know, welcome to parenthood. You have to do what's best for your child at the moment and put yourself aside. And that's, uh, you know, no, no bigger example than, than that at that moment. I think everybody has a survival mode. And I just, I remember when we got on the plane, like I just got on the plane and I just pulled my hoodie up and pulled my hat down over my eyes. And I just leaned against my husband and just started crying. Cause I was just like, here I am like yesterday, like not even 48 hours ago, gave birth. And now I'm on a plane like I'm sitting here on a plane waiting to take off to fly to Vancouver. And then from Vancouver, I had to switch planes and then connect to Seattle. And I was just like, oh my God, like, I, I don't understand like how, <laughs> how of all things this could have happened. Like, and it was just a moment where I was just like, okay, I just need to, you know, cry and get this out of me and then breathe and reflect and just, you know, just let's do this because I really had no other choice at that moment. Like it was all, 
you know, it wasn't even about me at that moment. It was just about the only thought in my mind was I just need to get to my son. And at that moment, we at that moment, we didn't even know if he was going to live or not. So that was the, it was just so traumatic. Like Mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, all I could think about is if I, if he's not going to make it, I at least want to be there. That was probably the biggest thing on my mind was that. Absolutely. And so as you're sitting there in a moment of flying and what's, I mean, your heart is only wanting to go there and what can you tell parents who are maybe going through a similar situation to, you know, allow yourself to put the hoodie up and allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to be in the moments? Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to manage, but it, uh, you know, I, I probably let my self care go, uh, you know, just trying to, to get there and trying to be there. And I know I ended up visiting the, the doctor while I was there too, a few days after, because I just, you know, just survival instinct was like, you know, I, I was barely even eating. I wasn't, you know, uh, taking care of myself and you, you, you still have to, part of parenting is still self-care. Like it's still, you still have to be there. And if you're letting that part go, um, you know, it, it's going to come back to bite you. And it came back to bite me quite quickly after we got to Seattle and they were, my nurse, my son's nurse was like, you need to go see the doctor. She's just like, you know what you've been through, you just need to go. And I'm going to set you up with an appointment and you just need to go. And so I had to, you know, get to get to the doctor's office and stuff like that. And then they got me on some, you know, proper medication and, you know, got good, you know, and gave me like a, you know, I had somebody give me a good self talk too about, you know, self care and looking after myself. And, you know, and that really, that really helped that I had somebody there to say, you know, you, you, you've, your child is in good hands right now. You need to slow down and just, look after yourself too and take the rest if you need to and you know the rest will will come to you as we need you right so you know it, it was good to have that conversation with that person that I was just like yeah you're right I, I I've been thrown into a traumatic situation that hardly anybody has to has to deal with and you know there's no handbook on that but it but it was you know I did have to and you know really and props to my husband too who was like moving, you know, doing the things behind the scenes, like moving suitcases and getting us settled in hotel rooms and, you know, making sure I had food and, you know, those sorts of things. So I I did have a really great support system and my husband who just basically threw himself into whatever we needed to do at that moment, he was, he was able to do it. And, you know, that's a true, true partnership. And I'm very fortunate for that. (laughs) That is so awesome to have a partner who is boom, right there for you, no matter what, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, my, my husband was really the, the man for the, the situation. I'm sure there was times where he, you know, had to reflect and go away and, you know, cry and deal with things on his own, but he was always there for me and for our, our son. Like he was just a rock in those moments. And, you know, I really, you know, uh, I appreciate him in those moments. Cause yeah, I'm sure there was times where he was, you know, needed to, to, to have a few minutes to himself too. So, yeah, so he, uh, he was definitely uh, solid for, for all of us. That's for sure. That's wonderful to have that. And, you know, you said something, a couple of things, we go into survival mode, right? So boom, you're in the survival mode. The only thing you want to do is go to your kid. That's it. You're not looking at anything else and you're not taking care of yourself. And then you said, parenting is self-care can you expound on that well like uh going just skipping uh forward a little bit to another you know time in my life where you know i talked about my one son having autism and the other one having celiac disease well within a few months um like my son was three he was diagnosed with autism and then when the older one was four he was diagnosed with celiac disease and that was within a couple months of each other and then my mom passed away unexpectedly so I had those three things just piled on me all at once and here I am thinking okay you know I'm in my mid-30s I've got two kids I have a wonderful husband you know I should have the world by the tail at this moment it should be this should be the prime of my life and then all of a sudden I was hit with these three things all at this at the same time. And it was like, it felt like the rug had just been pulled right out of me in life. And, you know, uh, thinking of those moments, I probably didn't handle it the best way. I probably, you know, didn't handle it in a healthy way. 
you know, I know a lot of people, like by the time you're in your 30s, you've usually dealt with something like whether it's a death of a loved one or you've got a health issue or you've got something. But I kind of was like thrown into all three situations, like all at once. And I, I, I ran out of, um, like, I, I ran out of, of buffer zone. I was down to, to nothing and I I just couldn't couldn't function anymore. And I really hit a low point in my life and I self-medicated in the wrong type of ways. Instead of searching for help, I went inward. And you know, the, the when I get back to self-care, my self-care was like non-existent. The, the only thing I did for myself that I can say that really saved me at that moment was the one thing that I did for me was that I started to work out on a regular basis. I, I started to, I would drop the boys off at their programs uh, and I would go and work out for an hour almost every day like religiously and I was never one of those people that was super into working out before that in my life like I always we had a friend that was really into um into working out and I used to say to him how do you do that how do you go every day to work out and he goes well he goes I think of it like brushing my teeth he says you don't not brush your teeth because you're busy he, he's like you always find time to brush your teeth right I said yeah I said that's true I said you always find time to brush your teeth no matter what you're doing he goes well that's how I think about working out it's like he's like to me working out is like brushing your teeth you just don't miss it every day and so I kind of got into that mode where I kind of just no matter what was on my mind or what the what what else was going on I put myself first in that in that category and I went and did my workout every almost every single day and that was probably one of the self-care things that i did that really got me through a really rough time like really rough time like that's fantastic so it sounds like two things happened all right the whole world is crumbling around you you went inward what happened when you went inward Oh, nothing, nothing positive, <laughs> really, <laughs> not, nothing, nothing, nothing positive came out of that time. Like I, I'm a, you know, get out there and, you know, talk to people and meet people and do that sort of thing and, you know, get out there. And I pulled, I pulled inward. And when you, when you do that, you know, not, none of your problems in your life are going to be solved by sitting on your couch, like, and, you know, just, yeah. And feeling sorry for yourself or not being able to function. And when I actually got out of that and you know I'm ashamed to say it probably took me longer than 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 it it it, it should have like it, it took me probably over a year to pull myself out, out of that and starting to be productive and you know just finding your own pace and your own happiness and I have to just to reiterate on that point I have to forgive myself for 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 that too because like sometimes I look back and go you know why why did I waste all that time what was I doing but but at that time, that's all I had capacity for. And um, somebody brought up a point that said, um, your capacity is different than your availability. And that statement right there really sat with me because just because- Please repeat you know, that statement. Repeat, repeat your, that statement. Your, your, your capacity is different than your availability. So just because I'm available in this next hour to go for coffee with a friend or to do the laundry or something, doesn't mean I have the capacity to do that in this moment. Does that, does that make sense? Like, does that, the, does that kind of strike a chord? Yeah. Or? You're there, but you're not there. Yeah. You're there physically, but you don't have the mental capacity to contribute anything to that moment. And when I think back to that time in my life, you know, I didn't have the capacity to do things and I have to forgive myself for that because I was self-aware enough not to put myself in situations that I wasn't going to be able to, to contribute or give a hundred percent to. And I think that's probably, you know, one of the things that I, I had to, really change if I wanted to get out of that too was to you know start the baby steps into getting back into things and talking to people and communicating and you know doing more things and volunteering and doing those things those were all baby steps towards you know getting myself back and learning you know who I really am again and almost re redefining and rediscovering myself so yeah it was, it's a process <laughs> process love it so the first thing you did was went inward in in a withdrawing kind of way so you kind of withdrew from the world and then you talked about 
you know, the exercise, you modeled what you wanted. So you knew you needed to exercise something intuitively knew I got to move this body. So you ask someone, all right, how do you do it? And then you did it. So talk about going from the withdrawing. What was that step? Because I know it takes a ton of courage to take that step. <laughs> what was it, that step for you? It, it is. And, uh, you know, it's really hard, especially to go into an environment like I've never really worked out before. I wasn't really familiar with whatever, but I picked a place that when you gave your membership, um, you got coached every class. It wasn't like, okay, just go and use the equipment. You know, I picked a place that was like, you know, when you show up, there's going to be a coach there to ask questions and, you know, to, to kind of model your workout and stuff like that. Because if I would have gone to the gym and with nobody there, I probably would have like rode the bike for 20 minutes and then left. <laughs> I would have no idea what I was doing, but I, I, I picked a place where, you know, there was somebody there to guide me through it. And I really made a bond with their coach, not really a, a friendship bond, but a professional bond where, you know, we were, we, when we were together, it was good and it was positive and she pushed me in the right directions. And, um, and it, it just felt really good to like learn something new and, you know, just put, it was almost like when I got there, I put everything else aside that was going through my mind and I just focused on working out. And that's probably the biggest thing that working out does for you is that it puts you in a completely different mindset and uh that's probably the best thing that that I'd done for myself in a in a really long time was that yeah sometimes we need guidance to help us with our mindset for sure because when you're deep in that place it's really hard to climb out of that so getting the guidance choosing a place that has guidance as part of their package and their service how long how long did it take you to finally come to a place of maybe having some peace with your situation uh it was it was well over a year it was probably uh, a year 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 and a bit between the like the diagnosis of both my boys and then the sudden passing of my mom, you know, it was probably a good year before I was like, Hey, you know, I, I need to manage my life a little bit better and I need to get out there and, you know, volunteer and see people more and, you know, reestablish, you know, friendships and that sort of thing. And, you know, I, I just had to just do that and just reemerge and, you know, and back to the point of just, you know, for forgiving myself and, you know, and having my friends be like, you know, we're, we're, we're thinking of you, we want you to be part of the group again. And yeah, and it, it was, it, it was a long time, but you, but you know what, um, in the end, I think how it came out better than, than before. And I think for sure, just taking those steps to get back, were uh, were difficult at the time but now that I know but totally necessary because in order for you to come back you've got to have that whole self-care package the, there and ready I agree a thousand percent self-care is king because when we're looped into survival mode self-care goes right out the window and sometimes it takes really hard steps and withdrawing recognizing that you were in a withdrawing state because you said, I have to get out there. I have to manage life. I have to reestablish these relationships. You know, you, I have to do these things. So there was this pull, there was this draw to, to get out of that withdrawing going inward phase for that phase about how long were you going in that phase? I'm just curious for your time frame because you said your boys are about four, 14, yeah, 15 now. Yeah, they're they're 14 and 13 now, and when they were diagnosed, they were four and three. So it's been it's been 10 years since it happened, and just the whole reemerging process. I'd say it's been ongoing for 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 years really like because really when you think when you think about it like my first step was to you know start working out again and then I started volunteering like I started volunteering in the boys sports you know I I, I coached their hockey team for a while you know um, just got out there and met new people 
uh, made different friendships through through kids because you know they meet somebody and then you meet their parents and stuff like that and you re-establish relationships with with them you know that was another step just uh volunteering in the community at other events and just getting to know people out in the community you know it's it's been an ongoing rediscovery uh, process and i'd like to say that you know i'm in my late 40s now and it's still it's still an ongoing process like it's still you know i'm still doing new things i'm meeting you today you know like it's still it's still a process of still you know redefining yourself and there's no you know age limit to that either right so you know some people are going to be listening out there and being thinking oh, i'm 26 you know i should have my life together yeah it doesn't it doesn't work that way you know it, you just got to keep redefining yourself and reestablishing yourself and you know it's been you know 10 years since both of their diagnosis and you know they, sometimes you're just so enthralled in their life that you that you really don't have an extension that's your own you're you're just but you can still work on your life and your relationships and stuff like that within that and that's uh, you know that's kind of where I focused my life for a long time was just to volunteering and you know doing their sports and going to their schools and meetings and you know re-establishing relationships that I still have to this day that I started 10 years ago so those are those are all little things that um you know you just never know where you're going to meet somebody that's going to really help you in your life right so um absolutely so and you it's an ongoing routine process. yes beautiful absolutely and you establish you know the routine and um, the rediscovering process of your relationships and the purpose of that. So when you find your purpose and you dive into that, whew, 10 years are going to fly. And I love that you're saying it's an ongoing rediscovering and reinventing process. That is so true because I'm, I'm 55 and um, I was diagnosed with cancer in oh. 2001. Oh, wow. And I said no to chemotherapy and radiation. And the doctor said, I'll be dead in two years. So this year I'm celebrating 20 years. But during that time, it's exactly what you said. It's an ongoing process. You're constantly rediscovering and reinventing. And what we have a tendency to do is go into survival mode and withdraw. And then we're missing out on so many wonderful things. So tell me, darling, what's uh, going on with you from here forward? Uh, well, I've started my own podcast. Uh, so I'm going to be um, doing that talking about celiac disease and, and autism and um, anything else that co <laughs> that comes across uh, my plate. And uh, yeah, I've got a couple of irons in the fire for a couple different things that are co coming up. I'm uh, hoping to uh, do a, a, a TV docuseries on on celiac disease. So I've kind of got uh, uh, like a, maybe a YouTube um a docu series on on um, on you know gluten free leading uh, eating and healthy lifestyle that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I have going forward. And uh, yeah, just um, you know, just dealing with my kids and all their sports that they're in and stuff now. So yeah. And what's the uh, name of your podcast? Because I don't see that information. Uh it's original Tammy. Uh, original uh, Tammy. Yeah, original Tammy, autism and celiac mom. Awesome. Um, we'll get those in the show notes in case uh, yeah, awesome. anybody can okay. really relate with, with your story. So yeah, I'm going to thank you so much for being our guest. And for those listening, we want to hear from you. Feel free to leave a comment, send us a message and uh, like this, subscribe and do all the things and <laughs> do all the things because we want to hear from you. We want to keep this conversation going. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your transformational journey over the last 10 years and keep being amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.